how to capture accurate LiDAR data using the ROC R2A LiDAR in the DJI M210 drone. Let's go. First thing we're going to do is cover the equipment needed to fly this LiDAR mission. Step one, we have the DJI M210 version one drone. We have the RC controller, two batteries, and the iPad tablet. Here in the middle, I have the ROC R2A LiDAR system. It has a 24 megapixel camera, as well as the LiveOx AVS sensor. And then for our base station, we're using the Reach RS2 from Imlid. Behind me, you can see I have a two meter bipod, which we're gonna put the base station on. And then even further behind me, we have some aerial targets where we'll put the base station up on top of. Now let's cover installing the LiDAR to the drone. The ROC R2A comes in two components. You have the aerial scanner and we have the GPS puck. Let's go ahead and install the aerial scanner into the drone. On the DJI, we have the Skyport adapter, which allows us to just plug it in. And lock it on, it's easy as that. The other component is this GPS antenna. For this system, I'm just going to double stick tape it to the top of the drone and plug in the GPS to the LiDAR. And there you go, the LiDAR is installed. Now let's go ahead and set up the base station. We'll take the Reach RS2 base station, turn it on. Now place the base station on your two meter pole or your tripod. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place the tripod on top of a known survey monument or an area that I'm going to survey in later. Now the other thing is, I'm putting the base station on top of this aerial target, and I'm gonna do some post-processing to get this position known really well. I'll cover that later in a different video. That's not for today. For today, I'm just gonna put it over a known point and start recording data. All right, now that I turned on the base station, I logged in using my phone's Wi-Fi to the Reach base station, and then I navigated to the Reach View app, open that up, and I can see here, I have the Reach base available. I click on that. So right here, we can see how many satellites we have. Now, that looks good, so I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna navigate to Logging, and then I'm going to turn Raw Data, Rhinex 3.03, on. Now, I have the system set up to capture one second observations, and now that's it. Now the base station's set up, it's recording static observations. Now it's time to go ahead and check the airspace and then plan our mission plan and fly and capture LiDAR data. Let's check the airspace. To check the airspace, I'm using the AirMap app. And as you can see here, we actually have a lot of restrictions of our airspace. But right here where we're flying, we have the ability to use the LANC in order to get a 200 foot instant authorization to fly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that authorization now. So I went ahead and created the instant authorization. I submitted it, boom, there we go. Good. So now that we got that instant authorization for the airspace here, I'm gonna pull out my iPad and start doing a mission plan. I'm gonna cover mission planning in a separate video, but to su suffice it to say that I'm just gonna be using Maps Made Easy and it's pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is draw a polygon and it's gonna go ahead and just calculate the flight path the mission planning is totally separate from the LiDAR unit. I'm just using mission planning software that works. So Maps Made Easy is great. Uh, DJI GS Pro, Ground Station Pro is great. Drone Deploy is a great app. Pix4D Capture, all these apps work. They all control the drone. Uh, and then if you're on a PixHawk auto, uh, autopilot, uh, Q Ground Control works really well. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and plan that mission. All right, so I got my tablet out and I connect to the drone. Now using MapsMate Easy, I just created a quick polygon. I'm doing a cross-hatch mission today. Now that we have the LiDAR installed on the drone, the base station logging data, the mission plan planned, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the LiDAR sensor now. The way that you operate the LiDAR is you pull out your phone, log into the hotspot that the LiDAR creates, and go to the website for the ROC R2A. Logging into the ROC R2A, you get this screen. You can see the status, latitude, longitude, how many satellites you have, the camera that's present, and then right here, I'm gonna click start. So now we're waiting for static alignment. Static alignment complete. Now it's time to do our calibration flight. So for our calibration flight, I'm gonna go ahead and take off straight up in the air. 
Now fly in a straight line for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna fly two figure eights. Once I've done this, I'm gonna execute the mission plan. It'll just fly the mission plan. If I need to, I can come back, land, change batteries, hot swap, keep flying the mission. And then once I'm done flying all my missions, I'll land flying forward back towards me, land on the ground, pull out my phone again, and shut off the LiDAR. And after I've done this, I can then go to the base station, turn off the base station from logging data, grab the data from the LiDAR, it's on the USB stick, take the data from the base station, and proceed to the desktop processing software. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get up in the air, start flying. All right, we just finished flying our LiDAR mission. Now I'm gonna pull out my phone and turn off the LiDAR after one minute. All right, so now I'm connected into the Rock LiDAR. I come over to the app again, and I'm just gonna scroll to the bottom and click Stop. Now here I can see how many pictures were taken during the flight and how much LiDAR data was captured as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop it, scroll to the bottom, and click Shut Down. Now the LiDAR is turned off, stop capturing data. I can go ahead and turn off the drone, and then I can go to the base station and stop recording data. All right, now that we're done flying, it's time to process the data. I got the USB drive from the R2A LiDAR. This has all of the LiDAR and all the imagery and all the GPS and IMU, everything on here. And then I got the file from the base station, and I went ahead and uploaded that to my Google Drive, downloaded my computer. So now I'm just gonna plug this in and double click that project file to start the processing process. Now I plug the USB drive into my computer. The first thing you wanna do is transfer all that data to your local machine because sometimes these LiDAR data sets can get really big and it's too big for that USB stick. So it's best to be safe than sorry. Move it all to an external hard drive or to your local machine. And then you click this PPK PC Master Project. Go ahead and click that. It's gonna go ahead and ask us for the base station file, which we downloaded already. Here's the observation file. I'm gonna open that up. Now that I've opened that up, it's going to go ahead and start converting that base station file and start processing. The next thing it's gonna do though is ask us for that precise location of the base station. This is the coordinate of the phase center of your GPS. So that is the coordinate of the center of this device. In WGS84, ellipsoidal height, that's the projection it's gonna be in. So if you put this in WGS84, ellipsoidal height, this exact center, then the processing is gonna work out perfectly. Everything's gonna go smoothly. If you guys don't know what that means, that's a big topic and we're gonna cover that later in another video, all about datums, projections, and coordinate systems. So stay tuned for that one. For now, just get the WGS84 ellipsoidal height coordinate of the center of this and put that into the software. And there you go, that was flying the ROC R2A LiDAR on the M210 drone to capture LiDAR data. Basically that simple. We just install it on the drone, we set up the base station, start logging static data, make our mission plan, turn on the LiDAR, start recording data, do our calibration flight, the straight line and then the two figure eights, just fly the mission like normal, land, let it sit for a little bit, turn off the LiDAR, and then we take the USB thumb drive and the Rhinox data from the Imlid and use the PC Master desktop software. And this will make the point cloud. And then from there, we can use the PC Painter software to colorize the point cloud. And now we have a geo-referenced, a highly accurate LiDAR colorized point cloud. It's that easy. I'll see you guys in the next one.